works right from the opening whistle as Illinois starts off with a bang. Claude Buddy Young sparks it for Illinois and carries the ball half the length of the field for the first score of the season in Pitt Stadium. Now Rykovic gets set. He forwards. It's intercepted by Sacconi, 17-year-old Panther Flash. He races it back 15 yards before he's down. Sacconi again. A short pass and the Panthers are full speed ahead. One yard to go and the freshman charges over the line to tie it up seven all at the end of the half. Third quarter and now the going is tough for the Panthers. They're forced to punt. It's a long one down the field. Illinois sends in Chick Maggioli for this one and he clicks. A fake crisscross and there he goes tearing up the turf for 75 yards to wrap up the game for Illinois 33 to 7. And the 1946 season is off to a thundering start. Way down south in the land of cotton, Georgia meets Alabama and presents Charlie Trippy, the one-man show. He fights off the Alabamans and unscrambles in time to heave a perfect pass. And there's a big chunk of yardage gained before the Crimson Tacklers take charge. It's Trippy again. As the Alabama linemen surround him, he tosses to Don Edwards, who grabs it in a swan dive cat. Second period. Trippy, one of the great breakaway backs of the year in fast action. When the Crimson Lads threaten, he makes a wide U-turn, and there he goes! Trippy is in the spotlight all day. Off he charges on a 50-yard dash for another touchdown to wrap it up for the Bulldogs, 14-0. With the score 7-0 for Ohio, Tony James flips a Buckeye pass, but Chick Saul steals for the Wildcats. Now Northwestern takes up rushing tactics. Ashenbrenner crashes through for one of the Wildcats' eight first downs. There goes a pass by Daggett. It's speared by Jack McKenzie's fingertips and Northwestern rides high. 30 seconds left in the half. Daggett heaves and is taken by Murakowski who goes over to tie it up 13 all. Western still a threat as Frankie Ashenbrenner forwards. Tony Adamley, Ohio State's great defensive center, intercepts and he charges deep into Wildcat territory. There's gloom on the Northwestern bench. Now Joe Whistler hurls across for a Buckeye touchdown and Ohio forges ahead 32 to 20. Northwestern sends Squall crashing into the clear. Runs out 81 yards for a Wildcat tally, but it's not enough as Ohio State wins 39 to 27 in one of the great games of the season. The Irish and the Hawkeyes. Lou Jack is on the beam. He forwards 32 yards to halfback Terry Brennan, who steps over for a touchdown. It's Lou Jack again, fading for a pass. He lets go a long one to end Leon Hart, who makes a smart catch and a 50-yard game for the Irish. Now Bob Sullivan crashes through right tackle, and they're on the one-yard line. Another Notre Dame score as fullback Pinelli hurdles over. Now Mello can't hold Lou Jack's hand out, but Johnny is on the spot. He grabs the pigskin and opens the throttle. Full speed ahead for 45 yards and pay dirt. What a man! <laughs> Capacity crowd at Braves Field sees the Eagles open up with aerial fireworks. Pansiera, number 43, spearheads the attack. It's a 40-yard pass to Mangin, and the volunteers know they're in a ball game. Pansiera's on the battlefront, but the enemy surrounds him. He snakes his way free and heaves to Ed Burns, who tears up the turf to score for the Eagles. Tennessee takes the offensive and soon the ball is in touchdown territory. Lund with a blockade of blockers sweeps around end to tie it up at the end of the third period. Fourth period and Lund takes a pass. 
There he goes for a first down. Minutes to go and Boston fights back. There's a forward that looks good, but wait. Walt Slater intercepts for the Volunteers and stages a 75-yard dash from his own 25-yard line to put the game in the bag for Tennessee. The Webfoots meet the Trojans down in Southern California. There's a pass. It's intercepted by the mighty battle who bombshells down the field. From the 15, Southern Cal sends Lily White driving through the line all the way for a Trojan tally. With Gray in motion, the action is fast as Mickey McArdle flips him a lateral and he gallops through the enemy line 20 yards before Oregon cuts him down. It's battle again. He tears through the Webfoot line and into high gear to outrace the Oregon lads to a touchdown and a big win, 43 to nothing. <laughs> Yale and Harvard clash at Soldier's Field. There's a Harvard pass. It's grabbed by O'Donnell and the Crimson back smashes into the sideline. For the moment, Yale is stunned as Gannon goes over for Harvard. It's Gannon again, slamming through the Eli line in a terrific crimson drive. Yale trails 14-0. First passes. Nat Herney takes it, and it's a jittery moment for Yale as he fumbles the ball. But Jack Roderick recovers, and old Eli cheers. Now the Bulldogs are on their way. An open attack startles Harvard. Nat Herney's on the receiving end, and he's soon surrounded. Nat Herney goes through for a touchdown, and Yale wins. To the victor go the spoil, and the fight continues far into the night. Army-Navy Day in Philadelphia for the 47th annual clash of the service team. President and Mrs. Truman root for both sides. Tucker, Army's quarterback, gets off a pass 40 yards to All-American Glenn Davis, way down to the Navy's 15-yard line. Now Tucker laterals to Davis. Glenn picks a one-way street, breaks away from the Navy tacklers, and scores standing up. Army 7 to Navy 6. Army's Doc Blanchard flashes through the line. The great All-American outwits Navy pursuers 50 yards to a touchdown. Army attacking in Navy territory. Davis passes to the Navy 10-yard line, but Williams intercepts and starts weaving back down the field with a convoy of Navy blockers. What a game! Here's the play that'll be talked about forever. Hawkins shovels to Williams, and he's tackled on the 5-yard line. The referee calls it in, and the clock keeps going. It's all over, but these Navy boys have no reason to be downhearted. 